All right, in this lesson, we're gonna look at earnings per share. This is one of three ratio analysis that we're gonna walk you through in this section. So let's get started by understanding what EPS is or otherwise known as earnings per share. So earnings per share is another way to present the net income of a company. This ratio tells shareholders how much net income is generated for each share of common stock. So at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're gonna take net income and we're gonna show it in a different way. And that way is gonna be based on how many shares are outstanding. So if you owned one share, the way that I like to think about it is how much of the net income belongs to you based on you owning one share or what's attributed to your one share. That's what we're doing in this lesson. Now, the way that we calculate EPS is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take net income and we're gonna subtract preferred dividends. And the reason why we're not gonna, we're gonna subtract preferred dividends is because we can't participate in that anyways, so it's really not our money. And like we said before, preferred shares almost act like debt. And because of that, it's got to be paid first. So the way that like we like to think about this, is we take net income minus preferred dividends divided by what is available to common shareholders. We take that and we divide it by the average number of common shares outstanding. And we're just going to keep it simple here. You're just going to take the beginning plus the end and divide it by two. And when we do the weighted average, number of common shares outstanding, it gets a little bit difficult because it's the time weight and that's beyond the scope of this lesson. So just know that we are going to use the easier way of calculating this instead of the actual way, which is using the weighted average method, which calculates based on time rather than dividing by two. That's going to give us our EPS. So what are we looking for? Well, obviously the higher the ratio, the better. So the higher your EPS, the better. Um, at the end of the day, there isn't really a limit, but um, you can't just say you want a hundred dollars uh, EPS. You don't want EPS to be a hundred bucks because if that's not its norm, then you're just looking for something that's not attainable. So it's important to look at other companies in your industry as well as what has the company done in the past. Really, the best kind of comparison is using what you did last year, right? So if last year your EPS was $2.15, you would expect this year's to be about $2.15 or a little bit bigger. Or, yeah, bigger, unless you believe that something happened during the year that would cause it to decline. And if there is a decline, then you would expect it to be a little bit smaller. But that's kind of your best indication of where your EPS should be. It's hard to compare this with another company. And the reason why it's hard to do that is because you might have a million shares outstanding, but that company might have 2 million shares outstanding. So it's hard to compare. And just because they have 2 million doesn't mean that they're twice as big. They could just issue more shares because they need more capital. Capital, um, whereas you don't need to issue as much. So it's kind of hard to compare industry or even other companies. So oftentimes we use this as a comparison with ourselves in the prior period. So let's look at an example of how we would calculate EPS. This is more of a involved problem, but we'll walk you through it step by step. So assume company A reported net income of $55,000. In addition, the company issued dividends to their preferred shareholders. Um, in this case, 10%. 20,000 shares, $8 par value. So we're gonna to have to calculate preferred dividend. The preferred shareholders did not have any dividends in arrears. They were paid their full value in this year. Common shareholders received $8,000. There was 1,900, sorry, there was 195,000 common shares outstanding during the entire year. Uh, what is the earnings per share? So. It's not as easy as taking net income minus preferred dividend because we don't even know what preferred dividend is. Now I can tell you this, that we don't care about this, so that's just extra information because the number, the dividends that are being paid to common shareholders have nothing to do with the problem here when we're trying to calculate EPS. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate preferred dividend. To do that, we're gonna do the same thing that we've done in the preferred dividend lesson. We're gonna take the number of shares, in this case, 20,000 shares, we're going to multiply it by $8, and we are going to multiply that by 10%. When you do that, you're going to get 16,000. 
dollars. So you could have done 20,000 times eight dollars, which should have given you about 160,000, then do 10%, but I've combined them here. So $16,000 would be your preferred dividend. So we're gonna take net income minus preferred dividend and divide it by the average number of shares outstanding. So in this case here, net income we said was $55,000. We're gonna subtract $16,000 of preferred shares, and we're gonna divide by our average number of common shares outstanding, in this case is 195. Now you might say, well, why don't we find the average? Well, if it was 195 the entire year, that is the average, because you would take 195 at the beginning, plus 195 at the end, and divide it by two. But since nothing changed, it would come out to 195. So 195 would be your denominator here. When we do that calculation, we are going to get 20 cents a share, okay? So our EPS is 20 cents a share. So what that basically means is that if you own one share, the net income that the company had what's attributed to you is 20 cents of that net income for every share you own. So if you own 100 shares, that would basically be $20. So of this $55,000, what's attributed to you is $20. So that's kind of how we look at this at the end of the day. And again, is this good or bad? We're really not sure. We got to actually look at this with, the industry, uh, with our prior year and what our predictions are to see if this is good or bad. But it is positive. So at least that means that it's semi-good. Um, but then again, if last year was $1 a share, then this kind of stinks. So that's how we calculate earnings per share EPS, probably one of the most common ratios when it comes to investing out there. A lot of people look at the EPS just to see what does it look like from a per share standpoint. And we're going to get into some other ones that will also help us with investing as well. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.